All right, everyone, welcome back into another NFL DFS video. Going to be touching on everything that we need to know here for this Thursday night showdown slate between the New England Patriots and the New York Jets. Let's go ahead and get into it. So let's just talk about the game total in general. 38 and a half points is going to be the game total. Uh, the Jets are going to be favored to win by six points, which I do find to be a little bit strange. Uh, just given the fact that these two teams look pretty similar on paper. Um, and both teams, in a way, kind of played an opponent last week that is probably the same kind of style that we should be expecting in this game but honestly these two teams looked exactly the same really trying to establish the run not trying to throw the football too much obviously the quarterback advantage does go to the jets but these two teams really do seem to be the same i, I guess the biggest difference last week was two big plays for the patriots one they had a defensive lapse that led to a DK Metcalf touchdown. And really, the Patriots dig off a lot of production to the receiver position last week. And the Jets, kind of vice versa, have been giving up a lot of production to the running back position. But guys, for the Patriots, they uh, I forget what the penalty was now, but they would have had a field goal that essentially would have won them the game. But they gave a penalty that pushed them five yards further back, which meant the kicker had to drive the football probably a little bit lower and thus the kick gets blocked, and then the Patriots end up losing the, the game. They probably shouldn't have lost that game. It seemed like they were the better, better team that game. Uh, in contrast, the Jets probably shouldn't have won last week as well. So it's super interesting that that is a six-point spread. Um, in terms of making NFL DFS lineups out of that, I don't know if we really need to factor that in that much because I don't know if I exactly agree with it. Now, in terms of what we should be looking at for this game, the, the biggest thing I would say would be the guessing game of how many snaps will Mike Williams play? Uh, so we look at on the NFL DFS cheat sheet, we'll see 18 snaps, 18% of the snaps in week one, and then in week two, 65% of the snaps. Okay, the biggest takeaway that we saw though or heard was that Mike Williams was really not supposed to get that many snaps, which does make sense. That's a big jump from eight, 18 to percent to 65 percent when they do have a short week and i think that's part of the equation as well like they have a short week this week does that mean they're fine giving him an ex that same kind of 65 percent of the snaps or will they realize all right that was a mistake we're gonna have a long week this coming week let's just cap those snaps let's put them at about 50 percent of the snaps i probably see that more so now mike williams is someone that can catch a deep ball um i would argue he didn't really look that good last week so kind of concerned about that Probably not someone we're going to be on. And then let's just stay with the Jets. I want to call it Tyler Conklin because he is going to be at a super cheap price tag. So guys, Tyler Conklin on this slate is going to be priced at 2.8 on DraftKings, which is extremely cheap. Okay, again, low game total, their favorite to win. Um, probably not going to be that high projected own, but um, if he gets his projection, which is right around 5-4 fantasy score, that would mean that he's definitely going to be too low. And so again, I want to call it the snaps. 90% and 92%. Tyler Conklin is someone that throughout his career has been a solid kind of floor guy for the most part with Zach Wilson as the quarterback. He averaged like a top 10 tight end. I kind of was expecting that well, Aaron Rodgers was going to be the quarterback as well, just, you know, giving him some easy catches. And maybe it's just one of those things where it hasn't worked out. It's only week two. I don't think we should be drawing any conclusions too much. So, and so when I see the fact that we can get a starter for the Jets, that's playing a ton at 2.8. I'm highly intrigued by that because look at the players after that. Like it, it gets ugly. And honestly, the price difference from him to Greg Zerline, who I do think this has a good chance to be a kicker and defense slate. I do think we want to be setting, if you guys are someone that uses the lineup builder or a lineup builder for that matter, I do think you should be setting a rule where you have at least one kicker, um, one kicker of either team. So Greg Zerline, Joey Sly, and then the defenses. So one of those four in all your builds, probably don't need to put them in the captain, but one of those in the flex, I think that's going to be a slight, it'll be a guessing game as to which one. We won't really know that answer, but I'd be fine with either of them. Uh, Braylon Allen, um, I, I, I kind of mentioned this in passing a couple of times. I, I tweeted about it as well. Um, I mentioned that for these backup running backs and basketball drafts, it was insane that he was going undrafted in some cases. Now this was like middle of the summer when, not that many people were paying attention to it, but like being a Badger fan, I kind of knew his talent and I just, I found it strange. So last week's production wasn't all too shocking. The fact that he was involved wasn't all too shocking, but yeah, Brees Hall is still going to be the top player we want to be looking at. 11 targets is, or 11 opportunities is not something we should be like avoiding, I would say. At the same time, like we can get Antonio Gibson for the Patriots, who's 
the exact same play at cheaper at a cheaper price and if they are going to be playing from behind like we probably want to be looking at antonio gibson more so we'll get into the patriots there but i want to kind of draw that distinction out because it is a little bit crazy that pricing for him for braylon allen jets defense are going to be in play alan lazard is more of a shoulder shrug play if you end up on i'm sure go for it um but really i think i want to concentrate on garrett wilson uh i think he's going to be probably my favorite captain's pick on the slate and that that comes due to really the game last week for this New England Patriots defense, where you had JSN really just go off against them. Uh, DK Metcalf had a good game as well, but I think Garrett Wilson is much more of a JSN type type of player um, rather than a physical dominant player, I guess, like DK Metcalf. Wilson's more of a route type of guy. And so I do think they'll be able to you know watch the film, see that success, and then be able to replicate it. And so I do think we're probably locking in around five for or sorry, around five receptions and around, you know, 10 or so fantasy points, which not that great. At the same time, I do expect this to be a low scoring game. So I, I think Garrett Wilson would be the one I want to go out my way to target, but we are going to be able to fit in Brees Hall into our builds. Um, Patriots defense have been good ish. I mean, they've been good enough. Last week's strategy for the Seahawks was clearly to not rush the football. They were without Kenneth Walker. Maybe that had to do with it, but they were clearly just going to throw the football. The Seahawks were. So I still think Brees Hall is firmly in play. I mean, he still had over 20 opportunities, still had a massive game, and we'll easily be able to fit them into our build. And so uh, I do see Aaron Rodgers more of a shoulder shrug play. Like, he'll probably give us 10 for a fantasy score, but at the same time, like, how many more points will Rodgers score than, like, Greg Zerline? It it might not be that much. And uh, if you look at kind of his prop lines, which I know uh, probably some of the audience doesn't, his kicking points line is at 6.5 kicking points, and maybe two of those are 40-yard field goals. Right, if that line's correct, like he begins some massive points out of Greg Zerline. Now let's jump into the Patriots. Uh, really, what I want to call out is the snap counts for all the Patriots players, but more specifically the receivers. So we're gonna get into the snaps tab on the nine to five. NFL DFS cheat sheet here. First, we'll show you Hunter Henry, about 80% of the snaps. That's great. We like to see it. Uh, Austin Hooper, about 50% of the snaps. That's also good. But look at these receiver snaps. Um, like KJ Osborne kind of has been the receiver number one. I don't think that's all too shocking for anyone that was like paying attention to the preseason at all. At the same time, this has kind of been what was expected where they're just kind of spreading out the snaps. They were vocal about saying, all right, we need to find ways to get Demario Douglas the football. Uh, whether that leads to more snaps, we'll see. But they were pretty vocal about that. And so I do expect Demario Douglas to maybe get two uh, plays designed to him. Jalen Polk is someone that I do think will consistently start to see more and more snaps. But guys, this is like the difference between two snaps for these guys. I mean, 77 total snaps for Demario Douglas, 76 for Jalen Polk. So that's basically an even split then Tyquan Thornton is something that I do expect to see his snaps come down uh slowly but surely throughout the year and so last week not too shocking and then what we're here we'll look at the running back split I do wonder if they are going to be playing from behind again I don't know if I necessarily agree with that but if you guys are like yeah the Jets are six point favorites then you probably would want to be favoring Antonio Gibson a little bit more because I do think he is going to be more of the passing down back we have seen that a decent amount that being said the Jets weakness has been rushing the football and so Stevenson I think is firmly in play wish he was playing a little bit more but still getting a running back playing 70 percent of the snaps is pretty huge these days and so I think for the Patriots Stevenson is going to be a good starting point I I like that Uh, for what's worth guys uh, again kind of looking at props the prop market uh, prize picks and underdog both have Jacoby Persett's uh, fantasy score line and this the data echoes it as well at 10 for a fantasy score (laughs) so um not even getting one x out of jacoby percent we're, we're not going to want to do that then um uh, could he have a good game could he score a russian touchdown yes but he's not someone i'm going out of my way to target hunter henry as well like hunter henry had a massive game last week that seemed more due to um they saw something in the defense that was clearly there um he was open a bunch and then maybe that had a snowball effect as well where all right the plays that they had designed hit and then they just kind of kept going back to him wouldn't be surprising to see him have a big game, but I would much rather play one of those pass catchers that are extremely cheap. So you got Demario Douglas. Again, he's probably going to get some design looks here. I don't think we're looking for a massive game out of him, but at the same time, should be more improved than what he had last week. Not not that tough to do. Uh, Jalen Polk's probably the one I'm most interested in. Uh, three targets last week, had a touchdown. I mean, not too much there, but given the pricing, 
He, I mean, he's just a strong play. I love the talent. I do expect him to be the top receiver uh, in this passing offense as the season progresses. But I don't really get the pricing for really both KJ Osborne and Tyquan Thorne. Like KJ Osborne, again, has been the lean snap getter. Where we should be locking in some sort of production here. And it is a game where Vegas thinks they're going to be playing from behind. So I, I think Osborne makes the most sense there. Uh, you don't have to play him. And then Tyquan Thornton, like he'll probably get, again, if they're playing from behind, he'll probably get a deep shot or two, which is somewhat intriguing. You know, to hit on a big play, maybe he does. And then he, he three X's at his price tag. Like that's, that's crazy price tag. But again, Antonio Gibson, extremely cheap, happy to get to him. And then again, the kicker's defense firmly in play. So from there, what do we do? Because we have so much salary left over. That is going to be the issue. There, there's enough value on the state where you can kind of plug and play whoever you want. Uh, and the pricing is kind of bad as well. And so for me, I do think I, it's, it's really Garrett Wilson, probably 25% in my captain builds. Brees Hall, 25%, Stevenson, 25%, and then just 5%, maybe Rogers, 5%, you know, whoever. But I want to go pretty heavy on those three. And so that's that's what we're going to try to mimic here. Uh, Garrett Wilson is the cheapest among the three. So hopefully we can make a better build with while including those three. Let's see, 5.5 left over here. I wouldn't mind getting to Alan Lazard there. Um, I probably like Greg Zerline the most here, but Jets D is fine. So for example, build, that's what we're looking at here. Let's go ahead and show you guys what the nine to five lineup builder is spending out to us as well. See if it's better or worse or, or pretty much on par with this. And I'm actually cra uh, curious. Let's see one thing here. I'm not saying do this. Oh, I was wondering if we could get Rogers in the captain's <laughs> build. If we had uh Conklin in the captain spot, because let's say Rogers has a good game. There is a chance that Conklin's part of the reason as to why maybe, you know, he gets a, a touchdown. I mean, Hooper's playing a decent amount. I don't, I wouldn't mind this. It's not great, but not terrible. All right, let's show you guys what the lineup builder is spinning out to us. So again, just have to give this uh, two data points to go off of. I am going to round Stevenson up to 20 for a fantasy score. Um, I, I think I'm fine with that. And I'm going to just 24.5 for Brees Hall. That's going to be for the captain's picks. Again, I'm probably looking at 25% for uh, all three of these guys. And so I probably will do that max exposure in the captain spot, 25% for all of them. That in a way is actually telling the data that I want 25% of them in the captain spot instead of like a max. It's kind of telling them that or telling it that. And so I'll show you guys what I mean. So like typically on a showdown site, I'm doing like 65% max exposure for a main site, maybe, maybe 10 and then doing this where I'm kind of setting my the actual exposures that I want. But let's just see here. All right, so I just ran this here, and I'll show you guys the ownerships as well. Kind of on par with what I was just saying. It's going with Brees Hall, um, Aaron Rodgers. I don't know if I exactly like that. Probably would want to get to Stevenson a little bit more. Uh, then Gibson, I think that makes sense. You know, maybe if you're not playing a lineup with Stevenson, factor in Gibson into that. I'm kind of okay with that. I think that correlates pretty heavily. And then Tyler Conklin. Yeah, he's just too cheap. Uh, I think we're going to see that. Uh, but let's see the player exposure. So 65% Rodgers. Gibson's gained a bunch. Wilson's a bunch. Zerloin's a bunch. I'm probably not going to do that much. Again, I'll show you guys this. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to set this rule. So I want probably exactly one of Greg Zerline, Joey Sly, Jets D, and Patriots D in all my builds. And then what I'm going to do from there, because I don't want 65% of Greg Zerline here, um, yeah, I'm fine with that. But for example purposes, let's just do like 45% for him, maybe even 40. Like we, we don't need that much of him. So that's going to tell the data. I want 40% of Greg Zerline and then probably going to be 40% of Joey Sly. Let's actually do that. This might be a unique slate though, where we can get away with having really two of a kicker and defenses in a GPP winning lineup. It wouldn't be too shocking. So I, I want to show you guys kind of what this spit out now. Going to be more of the same, obviously, but exposures wise. Whoops. I put 40% random for Joey Sly. We want to do 40% max exposure for Joey Sly. And here we go. That's much better. So yeah, we got 40% of Joey Sly, 30% Greg Zerline. And the captain, wow, that's crazy. So it likes him. Then in the flex, I'm not going to do that, guys, just as an FY. And let's actually just see. I'll show you guys what the, the top owned players are right now in the captain spot. So again, this is this is probably what I'm going to be doing here. So 25% for those guys. I want to get those. I think those are going to be the three highest scores on the slate. And because we have so much value, I think we're going to easily be able to do that. So that's going to be all for today's video, guys. If you guys want access to the tools that you saw in this video, head on over to 9to5sports.com. Use the promo code KEEPCASHING. I'll give you guys 20% off the first month membership. 
Appreciate you guys being here. Good luck on your Thursday night builds. Make sure to give a like and subscribe to the channel as well. I do appreciate that. All right. Thanks for watching everyone. Good luck. And as always, let's keep cashing.